I see so many coaches with 60, 70 clients and they haven't got social proof of toffee. Our coaching business currently has a seven figure net profit. The business income is completely separate to your income. People buy from emotion more than they do a can of C4, right? That's out of the um, caffeine addiction. Caffeine addiction. Hey, how are you fitness goals going? You working on anything at the moment? Oh, fuck me. Like, do you not think that that is wildly transparent? Our coaching business currently has a seven figure net profit. In this video, we are gonna talk around five things, I almost said three things, but we're gonna give you five. Five things that we haven't done to get here. Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter. If you're new here, we used to be called Bicep and Banter as well, in case you didn't know that. Um, and we're here to help you with your online fitness business in any way that we can. And today, as Mike just mentioned, we're gonna talk about things that we haven't done to get where we are today. We built, managed to build a seven figure net profit business, but these are the same things that we didn't do as well when we built our six figure online fitness businesses, which is what we're gonna give you advice on today. Help you build your fitness business specifically, I guess. So um, the first thing that we did not do, uh, we did not sell packages up front. We always Ooh. focused on building a stable base instead, layering up MRR over time and adding in launches to spike revenue. For us, it was the most comfortable feeling, the easiest sell, and, un mm. and enabled us to drive retention upwards. Expand. So there's two things that I want to expand on in this. Uh, number one, the first thing is, when you get given the advice to charge upfront, in our opinion, it is more beneficial for the mentor to tell you to do that because it looks as if you've made more money in your first month or second month or third month with them, whatever that may be. But you're getting paid to do work that you then have to deliver for three months after that. So that's point one, is that the reason I think a lot of people do that is it makes it look like you've had a 10K month when actually you've been paid 10,000 pounds worth for three months of work. So it's 3.33K a month, really. Um, so that's point number one. Point number two, and the reason that I really don't like them beyond that point where I think it's mainly done for ulterior motives by mentors is that... I believe that the reason that you shouldn't do it is because it gives people a feeling that within that time period, they're going to get the result that they want. And I think that is ruining people's understanding of what's doable, what's realistic. Uh, and I think that that's part of the reason that people don't have clients sign on for longer than that. I think that they sell them the dream of saying, pay a thousand pound, 997, sorry, up front for three months, because that's what my mentor told me to do. And then people go, well, I pay my 997, where's the results in the three months? That's what they're expecting, is they're expecting a 12 month package, a 12 month window, which that's the time they're going to work with you for. Uh, and that's why we never did it. Because A, we didn't think it was worth doing up front, pointless. And B, is that you're basically telling someone it's going to take you three months to get the sort of result you want. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd probably add to that. Um, most of the mentors will probably say, get them onto a recurring at the back. Although I just saw one mentor say, the reason why you're not signing people up at the back is because you need to offer these three things. It's funny. He said, um, you need to sell them and say you can pay for a year up front after they've done the first three months, right? Um, or second package, if they can't afford that, will be six months up front. Or you could go into a rolling, which is um, at a slightly higher cost. It's like, that's not the reason why they're not going into, like, a, 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 they're not extending. The, the reason is, is because you set them up for failure. You sold them something for 12 weeks and now you're moving the goalposts. So the, the third point that I'd like to add there is um, you're having to make them make another financial decision. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing that you want them to do. They, you want it to just be coming out like a utility bill that they're paying for coaching. Each month that they're in coaching, they're paying for coaching, and then that's it. Rather than them feeling like they've bought a product or a package and that in 12 weeks all of the answers to the prayers are going to be um, answered. Bad grammar. <laughs> um, that the problems are going to be solved. Yeah. That they're going to get the final result. And in reality, that's not really going to happen. They're just going to get 12 weeks of coaching and some people might need a little bit longer. And you're going to get this countdown effect where it's, oh, I've got seven weeks left, four weeks left, three weeks left, and you're sat there as a coach, you know, need to try to resell them. And then you've got to resell them again, knowing that they probably haven't gotten the result that they came in for yet. So, yeah, we never um, sold packages up front. Um, instead, we would just charge a, what we would believe to be a fair rate for coaching, um, just run it monthly recurring. And to stop this um, drop-off effect, for example, a lot of mentors will say, you know, what's stopping people dropping off? You know, you need to sign them into a contract. We just simply employed a 30-day notice, which is fair enough, right? It's a notice period that most people would adhere to that would say, hey, Mike, hey, Dan, um, 
just let you know it's going to be my last month. So you know that the last payment is taken. You've then got 30 days where you don't dip revenue where you can replace that person. So that way you can just layer up the the, the recurring revenue over time. It allows you to you know plan as well your business financials a little bit better because you know what's coming in uh, and you can definitely start to move money around and put it in certain pots and all that sort of stuff. Whereas I've heard of people scrambling around month to month being like, well, I've got to make nine sales this month to make sure I break even. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, that, that's another. That pressure. That's probably the fourth point in it. That's probably. I mean, we mm. could probably go on. We could do this a YouTube could be the video whole on this. Video. Yeah. Fourth point would be you start from zero every month. Um, I had a client that that came in. Um, and he'd he'd hit a, f- a few thirty grand months, but they were all up front sales. Um, he sells a package for three thousand pounds. So like some months, yeah, he'd, he managed to get ten and wicked, but next month he's starting from zero again. So let's just say next month he sells nothing, or he sells two. Let's just say next month, he's made six k that's a, a drastic change. So actually the positives of earning 30K are not really positives because you don't know what's coming in for the next one, for the next one, for the next mm-hmm. one. So you don't know how to budget, you don't know how to spend and your business has not really got any any real solid foundation. So what we've done in the first three to four months has been in, we've actually grown to, to 10K from zero um, recurring revenue. We've grown to 10K and then it's a little bit more comfortable. He knows that he can now live. And if he is going to sell the same packages, they're on top of the the, the base and the bulk of his um, of his income. And we will build that up to 15 and to 20. And again, he can still charge a 3K and he might get the odd one and so on and so forth. And it should be the spikes on top of the recurring revenue. So how we did it is we built up our recurring revenue and then we just ran group coaching programs that provided a little spike of income that then again filtered into better quality leads over time so that again, it would bump up our one to one example being let's just say we had 40 clients we then launch a group coaching that gets 40 people onto it that's extra 40 results for the brand plus we know that 15 of them probably want one-to-one coaching after so that 15 come into one-to-one that bumps up our recurring we run another launch more people come in another 15 went one-to-one that bumps up our recurring and that's how we did it yep. probably shouldn't have said that <laughs> it's too good the next one that we did not do we never sent cold DMs. Fun fact, we have never sent a single cold DM. Um, we don't deny that you could pick up a couple of clients, but would they be the right client or are they just going to drop off in a month or two? Instead, we prefer to focus on audience connection with content and conversations. I just never understood this. I've just, I genuinely cannot get my head around it because as coaches, we are bombarded with cold DMs from copywriters, from short form video people, from Instagram growth experts. And every single time you're like, ignore, ignore, ignore. A message request gets ignored. They look like an idiot. They look like an idiot. They look desperate, all this sort of stuff. I just don't get how anyone thinks it's a good idea. I, I genuinely, I'm absolutely baffled by it. The reason I think that people do it is because as a numbers game, if you send out a thousand, you're probably going to get two or three people reply to you. So it is purely something that if you do have no ability with marketing, no ability to put your personality across and literally no ability to create good content, you could still get two or three clients if you send enough DMs. Like literally you could, you could probably do it because enough people are maybe desperate enough, naive enough, all that sort of stuff to believe that you're offering them a free scholarship um, to get on a phone call with you or uh, a podcast appearance. For, I'm looking for coaches to come on a podcast with me. Fuck me. If that's not transparent, Jesus Christ. Mm. But it, it, you will get some people bite on that because you just, it's just a sheer volume game. It, just never, ever entered our thought process or our mind to think that that would ever be a good idea because I would never respond to one in that way. No. Um, yeah, I think um, it's an easy it's an easy get out for a mentor as well. I think that's another thing. If they tell you I, to send 100 cold DMs and you didn't, it's your fault. You didn't send enough DMs. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly how they get you. That's, it's that manipulation that they, they get you with because they say we didn't want it enough. If you want it enough, you'd send them. We're here to tell you now, there's nothing around, there's nothing about whether you want it enough. You might just have ethics that are far superior than fucking vermin. Like, literally. You may just have ethics that are not gutter. Um, anyway, before I go off on one there and start running away, like, it, it, it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, and, but the thing is, as well, is that they do it. Like, to be fair, at least they do the same thing they're telling you to do, whereas we don't. We just never have done it, never will do it. Like no one watching this has ever had a cold DM from us. You might have got a DM from us because you've sent something or you've said something to us or whatever. Because that's what it's about. It's about creating good relationships, good social yeah. engagement with people over time, not seeing everyone as a cash cow and ask them how their fitness goals are going. Hey, how are your fitness goals are going? You work on anything at the moment? Oh, fuck me. Like, again, do you not think that that is wildly transparent? Like, come on. Like, it's just, 
oh, it just infuriates me. Like, it infuriates me because, like you say, mentors tell people to do this. And I think coaches hand on heart sit there and go, I don't really want to do this. But the mentors go, yeah, but if you don't do it, then you've wasted your money. Yeah. That's what they feel like. So you kind of manipulate it into it. I never tell, I've never told anybody to send one cold in. Never. I will say engage with your audience, your yeah. current audience. Engage with those that engage with you. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. And learn how to generate more engagement with them and learn how to build connection with them. That's, that's what I will say. But send in spam in. Yeah, you might get a couple of clients, but is it a long-term strategy? No. So the third thing that we did not do, we did not kill our profit margins by trying to scale and hire staff too quickly. Our profit margin is roughly around 85%. I've seen coaches with a monthly revenue of 8, 9, 10K with only 50% profit. There's so much emphasis to remove coaches from the business these days. Why? Um, because it sounds sexy, doesn't it? Do less work. Sounds great. Do less work. Don't worry about it. You can get someone else to do all that sort of stuff. Um, these are tasks you shouldn't be doing. Um, sending cold DMs. <laughs> Hire someone to do that for you. Um, and and it's it's just baffling that, again, it makes you feel like you're running a business or they'll say things like, oh, businesses have expenses. Like you should be hiring staff to take away the, the stress of all the jobs you don't want to do. Yeah, but the jobs that you're asking them to do are stupid jobs anyway. You don't even need them. Not it's even necessary. It's not the same. It's just not the same. It's like somebody's read business for dummies. You're in a personally branded business. Yeah. This is not a pro. Like this is what they're doing is they're you're looking not selling at, cans of C four. Yeah, you're not selling selling this. You're not. You're the business owner. And you're doing the manufacturing, the marketing, the admin of the, of the of the product. That could be anybody that manufactures that product. That could be anybody that does the marketing of it. It's not personal. That could be anybody that does the admin. That's what growing a business is. But you're in a personally branded business. You've got to be front and centre. People buy from emotion more than they do a can of C4, right? That's out of... Um, caffeine addiction. Caffeine addiction, yeah. <laughs> that, that's what that's out of. Um, so it's, it's just a different way. And it's just this, like... That's how they're hooking you. That's why they're baiting you. Because of course you want a successful business. Of course you want to be a business owner. Mm. Of course you want things to grow. But it's at the wrong time. It's done out of vanity. It's, oh, look how many staff members I've got. Cool. That may- All you're telling me is you've got less money in your pocket. That's what that is. Because you're not at the point where you need to scale. We've got um, one, one admin staff that we currently pay. It averages out because we pay about the hour. Uh, about £150 a month, right? We've got a a seven-figure net profit, and the amount of admin work that's required is 10 hours per month, not per week. I've just asked one of my clients or told one of my clients, not in as many ways because I would never say that, but he was paying his admin 26 grand a year. Like, to do what? What are they doing? Yeah, not a lot, actually. Yeah, not a lot. But you've been told by somebody else, employ them. Employ them like this. Madness. I think as well, the reason that a lot of mentors do it is that they know you need their help to do that. Yeah. You know, they know that you need their help to manage that staff, manage that person, give them tasks to do. What can they do? How can they make your business a success? And I think, it, I think it's a bit of that. I think they confuse you. I think they give you this advice and they get you to hire staff because they know you need the support to, to do that. And, you know, I've heard people wanting to leave mentorships and go, oh yeah, your business is not going to survive without us. And, or even worse, they've hired a VA from the company of the uh, the yeah. owner of the mentoring company who also owns the VA company that then they say well if you quit the mentor and then we're going to take your VA away because as well and it's like well they're in, they're in your business then they are literally in it there's no SOPs you haven't set the standard you haven't told them what needs to be done and you own all that stuff they're probably doing all the tasks again to take the load off yeah until you want to leave and then all of a sudden you've got to do it all from scratch you've got no idea if they know your passwords they know all this sort of stuff right that's why I think a lot of them do it as well. There's a shady thing to it. It's a shady part of it. I, there's no doubt in my mind there's a part of it that, that's shady. So for example, if we were to ever, there are some of our coaches, by the way, who do have VAs, who do have admin. Of course there are. They don't hire one through our company, through our thing that we get a kickback on, for sure. Go and find one. Go, I don't know, go and pick one. Could be your sister, could be your brother. I don't care. Go and pick one. There's a, there's a lot of shadiness behind that stuff, which I don't like as well. It's always higher, higher, higher. Oh, I know someone. Oh, do this person. Oh, this person's great. I get a kickback off this. That's why they do it. It's just um, it's just poor business advice. So again, think of it like this. I made a post about this the other day. It's like if you've got if you're earning ten k right, and you've got staff, think about what that's going to be. So you're going to pay um, VAT on your revenue. So your revenue is ten k. So you've gone to that point of ten k where you're now paying tax on the whole revenue. I think some coaches, which is disbelief to me think that having staff is a business expense. Like, 
it's not it's not a business expense because you're you're paying tax on on the entire revenue, so you're paying that tax anyway, and then you're paying out of out of that, and then you're going to pay tax on the profit what's left. So you're going to be worse off at that level at eight, nine, ten k. You're going to be <laughs> worse off if you are going to employ staff. It needs to be at a different point. If you are going to employ staff, it would be literally somebody that can do something better than you, mm-hmm. i.e. a videographer or an editor, so that you can pump out more content and potentially another coach. And another coach is not going to cost you anything. You're not going to have to pay them three grand out of your profits. You're going to help them get clients and then you're going to take a commission split. That's how you would start to employ staff rather than VAs, and setters and sales teams and this and that and the other. But anyway... Um, if you're enjoying this video so far, that is three points that have gone. We've got another two left. If you're enjoying it, you might like our members group because uh, there's more of these content. If the values align um, so far, maybe take a, a look at our members group. The link is below. There's the info. What harm can you do? So the fourth point that I made. Um, so we did not panic and run a launch looking for five people every month. Instead, we focused on the longer-term play. We built a funnel into one-to-one coaching using lead magnets, paid lead magnets, and a low-cost product, then drove the price up for one-to-one as demand increased. Yeah, this is one of the biggest things that we see from people who come from from other mentors or mentorships is this, this whole panic around, I've dropped five clients this month, so I need to do a post that says I'm looking for five people. Well, no, that's also what got you to this point in the first place. Coaches have a real hard time distinguishing the difference between their personal financial situation and their business financial situation. So I wrote a similar post on this one that we're talking about now on my Canva. I did like six successful traits of of business owners. And I said that one of them was that all the most successful coaches understand that the business financial, the, the things that happen within the business's finances today do not affect their personal finances tomorrow. And what I mean by that is that your personal finances should be dictated by what you believe your business can afford over a 12 month period to pay you as a salary each and every month. You can then at the end of the year, give yourself a bonus and all that sort of stuff, but the business income is completely separate to your income. So if the business loses five to 10 clients in one month, that does not affect your wage this month or next month. It shouldn't do in any way, shape or form. It's annoying, yes. It's frustrating, yes. But it does not need a knee-jerk reaction because all good businesses, like if Mike didn't buy that C4 can today, right? Or the other two that are in his car that he's going to drink later on today probably, right? If he didn't buy them, C4 don't go, oh my God, you'll never guess what. We need to sell three cans today because Mike didn't buy those three cans. If that happened, they don't panic. They don't change the whole strategy for the next month. They just go, okay, cool. Right, this month, do less sales. Okay, well, next month, maybe let's look at the marketing. Let's make sure we send out a few more emails. Let's make sure we do a few more things, right? They have a strategy they're not going to deviate from just because Mike didn't need that caffeine hit today. I do. He does. Luckily for them, he does. And it's the same with your coaching. If you make these snap decisions, you don't have a long-term strategy. You just panic and you make decisions based on emotion and businesses don't do that. Yeah, I don't think I can recall ever opening up five spaces, um, to be honest. I, I don't think we did. We um, did calls to actions, of course. Like, we're not saying don't call to action or offer out your services. But my issue with this is that you have the call to action that most coaches do, which is this whole um, blah, 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 DM me for coaching at the bottom of each post and expect people to take massive which, action from which that, is useless. which is useless because nobody reads that far and there's no pain, there's no emotion, there's, there's actually no prompt towards coaching proper prompt they have this down here and then anything more than that it's like zero to 100 real quick it's like well i've got to open five spaces in no you don't what about just pitching it here what about just having some intensity behind the pain points the problem solving the objection handling the future pacing the social proof and make it clear and obvious that there's coaching space available why does it have to be this um uh, made up five always spaces. on a canva post always yeah canva always post. on a, always on that canva post it's always like that's that's the tool that people use it's like okay so um i'm opening space what mike what should the post look like should i do it like this should it be a real or should it be a canva post my answer is well it should be all of them it should be stories it should be mm. social proof it should be canva it should be carousel it should be real it should be all of them because it's not one post that you're making it's a an intense period of time where you're digging into pain points problem solving and, and, and making people aware that there's coaching space available so is it wise to run a launch 
every so often? Yeah, it could be. It's not how we would do it. We'd never do there's only five spaces. I'd say as of February the 14th, our prices are going up. So we're taking on the last few clients uh, before the price goes up. If you're even half interested, reach out. That's one. That provides some urgency to, to get involved. It could be um, as a celebration um, for our five-year anniversary, we're giving the next five people um, a present when they join coaching. So if you're half on the fence, it makes sense to get a present as well. That, that way it comes across slightly different. So you could run a launch like that or you could do a phase kind of like launch for like a group, a low cost product or something like that. But doing an opportunity for just five people every single month, the reason why it worked the first time is because it provided scarcity and urgency. The reason why it kind of worked the second time is because it provided some scarcity and some urgency. The reason why it stops working is because it's lost its effect because it's predictable and you clearly don't just have five spaces that come available every single month and guess what i don't need to sign up because i know he's going to open again next month so it's lost the scarcity it's lost the urgency i just still don't understand as well why coaches don't do course to action even if they're picking up loads of clients like like it's just this whole element of like oh i've lost five clients so i need to do more course to action no you should be doing as many calls to actions when you're full as you are when you're not full it shouldn't matter the strategy should be there thereabouts it doesn't like again like come back to the whole C four thing. They don't have a record month and go. I tell you what, guys, guys, let's stop trying to sell this now. Let's just let's just leave it. Let's just happy with that month. It's a pretty good month. No, they go right. How can we replicate that? How can we do more of that? How can we make sure we're doing even even better than that? How can we make sure we make another another record month? And coaches are very much like, oh, I've had eight signups this month. Oh, getting a bit busy on the old work front, so I'll probably lay back a little bit, stop posting content. Then the next month they have a few drop offs and worry why no one's reaching out. Well, it's because you didn't keep up the same things that got you to that point. You should be keeping up with your content, with your course to action, with your strategy, with your social proof. Like for me, your client numbers don't change the strategy that we have. Like I would still recommend most client, most coaches do a push for one to one client clients around January and Feb, regardless if you're full or not. Or if you've got a group program, you would launch it around that sort of time because it's the right time of year for most people to think about these sorts of things. I don't care if you're full or not, or if you feel like you need to take on less clients or more clients. The strategy is the strategy because of all those other things that are, that are talked about and discussed with your coach on a one-to-one -one level, which is what we provide and why no one else can do it. Um, is it should be done that way. So like if you have a month where you lose a few clients and the next month you've planned in to go, well, I'm trying to boost engagement ready for a group coaching launch, that shouldn't change really because then all you're doing is kicking the can down the road and just going, well, I need to get some clients in so I better do that quick. And then you go from there. Really frustrating. So the last point, um, we did not reduce our service. So most people look to scale by reducing contact time with clients, traffic light check-ins, outsourcing work, and removing loom updates. We've actually increased our contact um, as time has progressed. It keeps your clients happy, it generates better results, and you can command a higher price. Better results is what it gets instantly. Like Again, it comes back down to the same old thing. I see so many coaches with 60, 70 clients, and they haven't got social proof of toffee. They, you know, I mean... You might not want toffee for it, but anyway, you get my point. Uh, they just don't post anywhere near enough. And I asked them, they go, I've not really got anyone that's, that's worth posting. Not really got anyone that's got good results. What, from 60 people? Wow. Um, and again, it comes down to, because when they were told to scale, to go to 60, 70 people, they were told to do type form check-ins, traffic light check-ins, don't do Loom videos, don't give out too much support, don't do WhatsApp help. Well, guess what's going to happen? You're not going to get results. You're going to struggle to get people in through the door. The better results bit there is the key thing is that if you want better results, you want industry leading results, you want to be seen as an industry authority, why would you remove service and remove help? It, it genuinely, genuinely baffles me. Yeah, focus on um, building the best service first and the, the best business will come off the back of that. Most people try to do the things that they believe are the best thing for the business which is leverage time and that's not the best thing for your business your bu your business is built on reputation and results what are the things that are going to get you a better reputation and a better result it's going to be a better service right it's a no-brainer so rather than get into that amount of clients and then starting to scale back and and change contact time and reduce time Stop doing that. Keep your premium service premium. That's why you can then command a higher price as time goes on. If you want to have a more leveraged form of coaching, do it in the form of a different product or a group coaching. That's how you would start to scale. I'm not going to go further into that because I know people will copy us. Um, yeah, if you want that help, sign up for one-to-one -one coaching with yeah. us and we'll help you with the group coaching. <laughs> so I believe that is the time in the studio. So you if you like the video, um, then fucking like it on YouTube. Um, subscribe to us, all that stuff. Um, and if you want more information, 
Um, the, the best place to start is probably the members group. Um, hit the link below. That gives you all the details. Speak to you next time.